In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an image and remove items, objects, people from these images so you can take something like this and turn it into something like this. So you can use these images in the interiors of Spot the Difference books. These are KDP, low content, medium content books that you can self publish on Amazon. So if that interests you, then follow along. Now, if you've not been to the channel before, then welcome. My name is Paul Miles. I do videos on how to make it, keep it and grow it. And that's your money I'm talking about. If you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell. Now, this video is a follow on from my previous video where I looked in depth at this particular niche. We did niche research, keyword research and some basic resources for creating the interiors of these types of books. I'll leave a link to that video down below in the description. Now, we're going to be using two pieces of software today. Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. Why? Well, there are two main types of images. There are vector images. These come in .ai, .svg and .eps format. And we've got raster images that tend to come in .png and .jpg or .jpeg format. Vector images are very easy to edit. Raster images, a little bit more difficult, but I find them actually more fun and I'll give you a bit more information on those two different types of images as we come across them. Now, the techniques I'm going to show you are very basic and so will translate through to other pieces of software like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop or free software like Inkscape or GIMP. Unfortunately, what I'm going to show you today, you can't do in Canva. OK, so let's get started. So here we are in Affinity Designer, and this is the sort of illustration which is a typical vector type illustration. And the advantage of these types of images are that they are made up of shapes in layers that you can see here on the right hand side to build up an image like this. Where can we get these types of illustrations? Well, there are many sites of so things like Creative Market, Envato Elements, DesignBundles.net, I tend to get all my images from either Vecteezy or Creative Fabrica. Here I found an artist that's created all these different illustrations, which would be perfect for the interiors of Spot the Difference books. And in fact, we're going to use one of these illustrations and we can see here that they have full print on demand usage allowed. And that's the advantage of using images from these types of sites. You can be sure that you do have the commercial license to use them. And when you look in the description of these types of images, it'll tell you what format they come in. And here we can see here it says vector AI or Adobe Illustrator and EPS files. They also do come as JPEG files as well. So you've got the choice if you want to use the vector images or the raster images. So all you need to do once you've downloaded those images is just literally drag it into Affinity Designer. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is to left click on one corner of the image and just drag to the opposite corner and create a bounding box around all these different layers. And then hit Command G or Control G to group all those layers together. And we're going to rename this original. Then we're going to right click on this group and hit duplicate. So now we've got our duplicate layer. Next, we're going to untick the original layer at the bottom to make that invisible. Go to our copied layer and we're going to hit Shift, Command or Control and G to ungroup all those layers. So next, we can easily delete any item, object, people, whatever from the image that we like. And it's just a case of clicking on a particular aspect of the image. I'll enlarge that for you and just hitting delete and it's gone. Now, some of the other objects contain multiple layers. So you can just click on each aspect of an image and just hit delete until it all disappears. Now, there is a quicker way to do this. You could drag a bounding box around one of the objects. However, what you may find is if you try and do that, you will just end up dragging one of the background components. So one way to overcome that would be to go over to the layers panel and actually lock that particular layer. So now we'll try again and you can see we're now dragging one of the other background layers. So again, we'd have to go back and lock that particular layer. And eventually you'll get to the point where you can create a bounding box around a component of the image, 
and just hit delete and we can do this in all different areas of the image so we've got this girl here and i've removed her hat and you can see she looks a bit strange so we can actually just click on the hair and move that upwards so the next step is to unlock those layers we've just locked otherwise the image will end up looking strange and then we need to put a bounding box around the whole image so top left hand corner left click of the mouse just drag and then command g to group all those layers so now we've got two layers or groups we've got the original group which has got all the objects present and then we've got the group where they've been removed and we'll just rename that so we don't forget and we'll just call that removed and then what you would need to do is to export each of these grouped layers so you'd make the removed one invisible and just click on file export and you could export this as a png or jpeg when you've done that you can then make that layer invisible make the removed layer visible and export that again as a png or jpeg file and so now you've got your two images that you can put inside or on the page of a book what you'd also need to do is create a third image and this third image would highlight those aspects of the image that you've removed and this would be used in the solutions of the book and it's very simple to do this left hand side hit the circle tool on your image just drag go to the color box make sure the fill is invisible then select the stroke you can change the color of this and you can change the width of the stroke you can see how that varies and what you can do is just place that over the objects that have been removed and selecting option and the left click of the mouse you can drag identical circles to the other areas that you've removed like so and then you can export that as well as a .png or .jpeg file so you've got the three images that you need so next we come on to the raster images and for this we're going to be using affinity photo so the difference between a raster image and a vector image is that a raster image is made up of pixels so that when you enlarge it it degrades and becomes very pixelated so we haven't got all those different layers that we can easily delete now the two tools that we're going to be using are the in painting brush tool and the clone brush tool so we're going to enlarge this and we're going to pick an item to delete so we click on the in painting brush tool and what we can do is just paint over an object in this case it's a person and you can see it automatically disappears however the image is not perfect because you can see here some of the lines don't match up so now we can go to the clone tool and what this does if you hold down the option key you can see that little plus sign and choose a part of the image to copy so something like there and then move the clone tool across and if you click it will just copy parts of the image like so and as you can see it fixes that area now we'll go to this area at the top here again hold down option select an area move across and just click or you can paint across now you may find all oh, that doesn't look quite right so you can easily just sample a different area and again just go across and then when you zoom out you can see it's barely discernible where the object has been removed so you can do this with all different aspects of the image so let's take this window here we'll click on the in painting brush tool it deletes that it's left some artifacts there so go to the clone tool hold down option or alt click on an area now you can easily just with the bracket tool decrease and increase the size of your tool sometimes if it's too big it will bring in other artifacts so for this case we can go smaller and we can just paint down and remove that line there and we can do this for any area on the image we'll take this chimney here so in painting brush tool it's going to brush over this it's gone that looks pretty good except the roof looks a bit strange so what we'll do clone tool place it over the edge of the roof and then just move along click or just drag and paint now that doesn't look quite right so we're going to adjust that a bit more so i'm going to undo that and this time we're going to go over to the left hand side i'm going to choose a portion of this roof here and again just move up 
and along and I think that looks a lot better. We can just make sure the sky looks okay. You can see it's left a little bit of an area there. So again, hold down option, select a portion of the sky. Boom, it's gone. And so you can do that with all the different objects and areas on the image. Let's just do this once more with say this statue image here, which is a bit more of a difficult area. Now that looks a bit strange because it's placed a pillar over it. So what you could do is put the tool over it again and see what comes up. Now that does look a bit better. And what we can do is take the clone tool, sample a portion of the unaltered image, and then just go across like so. And we're going to take some of that there, move that up. Same down bottom here. It's got some light areas, which I'm going to get rid of. So option, we'll sample a portion of the darker area and then just move up. We'll sample some of this. There we go. So when you zoom out, it's almost impossible to tell where that statue has been removed. Once these images go into a book, They'll be, you know, quite small. And so it'll be even harder to tell where images have been removed. Now, this is a tool that will take some practice, does require some skill to use. I may have made it look quite easy there. But once you get into the hang of it, experimented with various different images, you'll find some in images are easier to edit than others. You'll soon come to terms with how to do these types of edits. And again, in the same way with a vector image, you would export the original image. You would export the image where we've removed the objects and also do an image where you've drawn the little red circles or blue circles, whatever, around those components that you have removed. Now, if you are new to this whole publishing game, self-publishing on Amazon via the KDP platform, then I do have this book tutorials playlist here where it goes through all the different steps of creating books, um, publishing them, uploading them to Amazon. Thank you much for your time. It is very much appreciated. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and until next time, goodbye.